Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this gorgeous spring morning, um, Tuesday, the 22nd of March, 2022. Um, welcome to Yoga Solutions Live, where I, I'm Mark Jack Reaver, and um, every week I try and share with you the best of my experience. Uh, been teaching and exploring this phenomena called, uh, phenomenon called yoga for uh, thir more than 30 years now I'm, uh, over 60 and it started before I was 30 so and uh, yeah and I, I've come up I, I started in quite a quite a physical and emotional knot when I began and um, so I've, over the years I've discovered solutions that's been that's been my reason for practicing yoga is to find solutions to the uh, well the existential suffering that comes with a body that hurts and doesn't uh, complains you know and um, what I came up with over the, over the years it, it seemed to be individual things for individual post you know individual parts of the body um, and Postures are a good framework for working those things out because they get you to do things where you're not avoiding certain actions, you know, which is what most of us do. And when there's difficulty in your body, you quite naturally avoid doing things that cause you pain, you know. Um, so we end up being locked in those uh, complications because we avoid them. And yoga is a good way of exploring your range of movement and freedoms and um, things like that. But um, what usually happen, what happens for most people is they come across something they can't do and either it puts them off doing it, <laughs> so they don't, because it means they're not very good at yoga or, you know, in their heads, which is complete rubbish. Um, or, um, uh, or they push through in order to, to win, you know, to achieve the thing. And uh, the, the outcome of both of those things is detrimental to the body. Because pushing through, you'll be pushing through with with the complications that makes the thing difficult in the first place. And um, well, you might you might be lucky. You might happen upon a natural solution, but it's unlikely because the intent behind your action is to push through. So it's kind of dominion over the body. And um, what, what I discovered over the years, maybe because I <coughs> I'm particularly sensitive to to um, not wanting to cause complications for my body, but what I discovered that the answer is not pushing through. The, an the answer is in resolving the source of the initial conflict. Um, long story short, it's kind of the same thing for everything you're doing. It's, um, it's not about my hips are tight because, my shoulders are tight because. Um, you know, all, all of the things that um, go on that interfere with your practice and make, make uh, certain postures kind of um, out of reach or not doable or whatever. It's all sourced in the same thing. It's to, it's to do with how you relate to the world. It, it, it seems um, a bit vague um, when you first hear that, that idea. But now here you are in your body experiencing something and you're experiencing it through your body. Do you, you know, doesn't it make sense that what you experience through your body is a direct result of how you are engaging through your body with the world? Because we weren't, uh, we, d we didn't appear physically out of context. We, 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 <laughs> we have evolved to have uh, the most efficient, that's, that's, the, that's the purpose of evolution, is to move towards efficiency of relationship to the world, to the environment that you find yourself in. And your experience of yourself 
and you know this on an existential level. You know, if you're if you're in a bad mood, the world, you, and you look at, and you look at outwards at the world from that bad mood, you will see what corroborates the state of mind you're in. If you're in a good mood, you'll see beauty. You know, it's it's just the way uh, reality <laughs> works, and postures are not different. Is it? Uh, and really, I've kind of discovered the reality of this kind of basic fundamental truth, I suppose, through posture work. So um, anyway, uh, it's, a bit, <laughs> it's a bit broad. The, the, question, the question I've had today was from Mandy, and uh, she comes up with good questions because she asks about specific postures, not just body parts. And um, the question was um, boat pose. How to do boat pose without causing, what's the terminology? Without causing havoc for the hips and the groins. Okay. So, boat pose. Um, so for those, those of you that don't know what boat pose is, it's, um, it's this posture where you, yeah, there's all sorts of ideas of what it's for. Um, and uh, from, from the question, I'm, I'm presuming that the th thing that happens is you find yourself in that position and it's a nightmare for your groins and a nightmare for your lower back probably, even if you, you might not even notice that. So, um, yes, how to approach. Okay, so to, <laughs> to um, find a solution to these uh, apparently complicated things, it's useful to go back to first principle, first principles. And, and what, what is the first principle? of your practice. For me, um, the thing that I'm doing is not really, it, it's just a curiosity. It's, um, it's uh, a play field, uh, something to try out, all right? And there's a sort of presumption that because it's a yoga pose, because it's, um, people can do it, that there, there's um, something to be gained from approaching it. And, 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 and usually what you gain from it um, is going to be something that you might avoid in life. You might not get round to um, sort of needing to find particular relationships. To sub and, and, and yeah, so um, yeah, the posture itself is not the thing. What am I looking for? Well, whatever I'm trying to do, I want to feel supported, obviously, and some people will think of that as building up muscle strength. Um, it's uh, muscle strength is a by, from my point of view, muscle strength is a byproduct of finding support, of looking for support. Um, so uh, I want to feel supported. If I want to bring it back to first principle, how do I feel supported? If it's not about muscle strength. Well, in order to feel supported, I need to use the surfaces and my relationship to them to support myself. That, that's, uh, that's, that's, um, that makes sense, you know? Um, and if I didn't have any bones, I'd be this uh, bag of jelly <laughs> uh, with muscles that can contract. It wouldn't do anything. It wouldn't do anything in terms of support apart from moving me around like a slug. <laughs> but because I've got bones, uh, I can find support through them by um, engaging, which involves using muscles, in a direction that uses the, the support for its purpose. Okay? So anyway, what I'm doing right now is starting from the first principle is that I, Another first principle is I don't want to be tense. I don't want to have to hold my weight up. Okay, and if when you do boat pose you get lower back and hip problems, it's because your groins and your hips and your lower back are holding your weight up. That's what they're doing, and um, that will have all sorts of ramifications. Like we're going to breathe, whatever. So it's not what we want to practice. You don't want to get strong at doing that. What you want to do is find something that feels like yoga. Now, what does that mean? Um, well, that's for you to discern. For, for me, when I find the yoga of it, there's a 
kind of unification between me and the expression of what I'm doing with my body. There's a, there's a wholeness and a simplicity that allows me to continue to, allows me to express what I'm doing through the breath and its release. So as intense as that might be, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that it is tension, even though it is, it can be intense. Okay. So, uh, I seem to be rambling a bit today, maybe because I'm trying to relax. <laughs> okay. So all I'm doing here is I'm using my arms around my legs so my groins don't have to carry the weight of these relaxing legs and finding balance that doesn't rely on me holding myself up with my spine, you know, so finding, finding balance um, so that my, my weight isn't carried. And then the next thing I need to do is to engage, engage with support. So I'm not engaging now, I'm just balanced. To engage with, where, where is support? Well, it's underneath my base and that happens to be the sort of middle back half of the pelvis behind the sit bones. That's, that's what's on the ground at the moment. So how do I cause a kind of, how, how can my muscles use that ground? How can my muscles uh, work through bones to use that ground to support me in space? And the thing I'm looking for is for that to happen through the rhythms of breathing. So a way of finding it is by, first of all, relaxing into my base to breathe so that there's a sense of the breath being something that arrives because I engage with the ground. So I, I drop my weight and then it's as if the breath arises because I use the ground for purchase, if that makes sense. And the result will be some core activity. You know, the belly muscles around the, the core, the core, the fluid core space will engage to kind of uh, support me as the breath arrives. So the, the breath arriving within me gives me a sense of floating um, because it's contained, because it's supporting, uh, because the muscles, uh, or the core support muscles are doing their job basically. Because I'm, and the reason the core support muscles are doing the job are not because I'm making them tense, not because I'm carrying my weight, but because I'm relating to my ground through the breath. So if you, could, if you know what I mean, what you'll feel is a breath that has some sort of tension around it, if you're not familiar with, to, with the feeling. It's just your core uh, being involved with support so that the arriving breath within you is unrestricted. So it's not pulling your belly back, it's not, it's not doing anything, it's just responding to the ground as you breathe. Um, another thing, if, if you're not feeling balanced, uh, a quite natural balancing proprioceptive thing that can happen is tension around the pelvic floor. You know, if you're off balance, the pelvic floor might have to hold tension to keep you from falling over. So if that's going on, then the, it'll be very difficult to breathe because, uh, um, from the ground. So um, you're trying to receive the breath from the ground by using it for support and the caveat is you need to be able to relax the pelvic floor even though the core is working so that's the in breath dealt with okay meanwhile your legs should be relaxing back into their hip joints and the way you use your arms can make a difference to that so you know if you're hanging back from your arms being heavy then you're sort of hanging off yourself. Whereas if you press down through your arms um, via the thigh bones, it's like using a surface for support. You know, if you were trying to look a bit further over a wall or something, you know, if you're trying to see a bit further, you would use your arms on that surface for support. And you can do that with your through your legs through your thigh bones, so there's no reason for your groins to catch any weight, directly into the ground or towards the ground, and you'll feel it wherever you're touching. So there's a sense of supporting yourself down, down through the arms, so you can relax your hips. Might be effort for the arms, but you know, that effort can be something to do with breathing. So 
So if, if the down through the arms is the breath, you'll be able to breathe whilst feeling supported by your arms. If the down through your base is your breath, your core will kick in and you'll feel supported by the breath. So if, you're on, if you have down through the arms and down through your base, you'll have a breath that is kind of free in the spine because the spine isn't being asked to lift your weight. Okay, and that's useful. That's with the inhale. <laughs> so one day we're gonna have to get around to the exhale. So if, if you've explored that, relax the idea because um, the mind can only do sort of one thing at a time, really. Relax the idea. I'd still try and rest down through your arms, if you can, so that you don't start catching your weight with your groins. The next thing we need to explore is how the release of the breath can support you. And um, when, when the breath empties, um, when, the, when the diaphragm, uh, sorry, when the breath empties, the diaphragm is meant to be able to travel upwards. Okay. So for that to happen, you need the belly to empty. If the belly doesn't empty, you end up holding your weight with your back. And that's part of the issue that causes the hips to be overly tense. So a way of finding this is to get a sense of balance where it feels like you need to be able to relax the chest and the arms pressing down stop you, stops you from collapsing when you do that. Um, and with that, with that going on, it becomes more possible to balance in such a way that the navel, behind the navel, can have a kind of downward dropping, released feeling to where you touch the ground. So if, if, you're, if the space behind the navel can drop back or anchor back, you can pull it back to get it going. And your pelvic floor may tighten to make that happen. And those things are okay to go with an exhale. So get a sense of behind the navel, um, gathering back to the spine and anchoring down towards the sit bones. And that's the release of the breath. Now, if when that's happened, you can kind of keep a sense of anchoring through your base from behind the navel as you breathe, you'll have a more powerful um, sense of support from the core as the breath arises. The, the difficulty is in relaxing the pelvic floor whilst the navel is back. But what, you, what you'll get is a very strong kind of sense of central support from the breath within you. And if the arms are still leaning down through the thigh bones, then you won't feel too heavy in the upper body. You won't have to pull your weight or anything. You know? And you won't have to compensate for these relaxing legs with your groins. So if you can have a sense of behind the navel is connected back and down to where you touch the ground as you breathe, then the arriving breath doesn't rely on you lifting. That's usually the problem. It's the lifting that causes the groins to complain. The advantage of finding that support during the arriving breath is that you are already supported and your, your breathing gear is already relating to the ground. So when you release the breath, it's kind of an internal release, as in you, you let go of the breath within, and there's a dissolving towards the navel, behind the navel, which you can drop your weight with. And if, if you find that, you've got balance, so you're not holding yourself up with the spine, you're relating to the ground through your um, base, via your arms and your breath, you drop into that contact to breathe and you have central support. So the breath itself sort of arrives like a column, a column of internal support. And then when you release the breath, you can release into yourself as you give weight to the ground. 
and those core responses will be strong but not held because it's to do with breathing. So uh, if you manage to stay in the thing as long as I have, then by now you'll have an idea what it feels like not to carry the weight of the legs with the groins. The difficult thing now is going to be how to get the limbs to engage in a way that doesn't um, put back all the problems. And the way most people engage with their limbs is they reach out. And, and, and if you look at any pictures of boat pose on, on uh, Google, you see lots of people doing horrible things with their arms, you know, reaching out and um, doing the same thing with their legs, which I won't do because I don't want to give myself a problem. If you want your limbs to extend, you kind of want them to extend in two directions. So I'm, I'm just going to... I'm going to keep supporting my legs and um, I don't, don't know if you can do that, bit, add a little bit of a twist but it, but it shouldn't make too much of a problem. You still want to be able to let go by pressing down, supporting yourself down with that arm. You still want the breath to support you by relating to your ground as you breathe and then releasing into your centre as you continue to drop through your ground. But how do I extend this limb? If I push it away from me, it pushes me off centre. If I reach out of myself, it makes me pull back. Right? What I need to do is understand that this limb is something that opens in two directions, from the elbow. Pardon me, from the elbow, in two directions. So, when that hand moves away from me, it's not the shoulder that does it. It's the forearm. It's the hand and the forearm is moving away from me. But the result wants to be something that travels back into me through my shoulder so that the weight of that limb can be centered through the spine. If the spine's behind it, then the spine has to carry its weight. If the spine is in front of it, oh, sorry, if the spine is in the middle, no, if the shoulders are around, if the wings are around the spine, and um, you can do that by pulling the shoulder back, but that will be you lifting. What you need is for that hand to travel out because the shoulder travels back. That's how the elbow opens. If you just play with that idea and do it with the release of the breath, because it helps, what you'll find is your rib cage does a lot. Right? If you just reach out, you do that with your arm and then you're carrying your weight. If you release the breath and as if opening the elbow in two directions, it's like there's a surface for you to meet with your hand. The opening of the limb will cause the ribs to come together and those ribs are the other part of the equation in terms of the breathing being the thing that supports you in relationship to the ground. So your ribs start working to cause that action. And those ribs gathering together away from that extending arm are the things that are kind of pulling you to pull, pulling down through your base to lever you up and that gets you into the upper spine you see so if you can get that idea that you don't just reach out with your limbs they extend in both directions from the central joints the opening of the limb will bring you back to your center so that they can float from the weight going down through your central channel. Didn't quite work that time because I was busy being relaxed in the legs. <laughs> but um, the same is true for the legs, okay? So the reason I did arms first is because it's more obvious. You can feel the how the ribs work when you engage in that way. If you want to open a leg, there's no point catching its weight with the groin and then straightening it because that will that will cause problems. What you need to do is it, the limb itself, the, the, your foot, instead of reaching out for you, if you engage with it to draw the weight of that limb back through to the ground, and I'd still give it support so the groins don't overwork, you can help it along with the arm, you know, to draw the weight of that limb back to the ground, then when the limb extends, it can extend 
from this two-way opening, as in the knee opens because uh, the, the knee opens because the thigh bone is anchored back into the ground. The foot opens away from the knee. The two working together is basically the limb using the ground for support. And when you do that, when you open that limb in two directions, you could try it on the ground, you know, so, so it's not so difficult. When you open that limb in two directions, the, the core will gather in away from the limb along with the thigh bone. So you get a core responsiveness, like you did with the arms. So basically, the, the limbs going out should help the core and the ribs come in. And if they do that, then it's relating to support and not relating to you holding yourself in space. So the, the core action, the outward traveling back through your bones to the ground, the outward traveling back through your bones to your center, causes the, the, the outward action causes the inward gathering. The inward gathering is your support that relates to the ground. And at the moment, it's easier to find with the out breath. But if I can breathe what I'm doing, get a moment of floating, and then I might get a chance to release into my bones, into my joints, through my spine, into the ground. Just for a second. There it was. Now that won't be passive in the muscles around the hips. So they will be worked, but they won't be, their job won't be to carry your weight. You might not be able to hold the posture for very long. But all of your efforts become an expression of you being in your center as you breathe and as you release. And from that center, expanding out, using the ground for support, using your engagement with space to, for support, so that you can continue to breathe and release as an expression of what you're doing. Okay. It'll be hard work for muscles, but it won't um, cause havoc. It won't cause problems. The hard work will be stuff that brings you back together. Okay. Um, if that was a, a nightmare for your neck and shoulders, just one other thing. It'll be the result for you is there will be a when you when you try the posture, you do a bracing thing around the middle back. Not necessary. Uh, the solution is the same as behind the navel. You know, if you can get the navel to naturally anchor towards the ground as a result of balance, then core support no longer becomes tension. So if with the arms, as well as leaning down through the bones, you can use your wings to bring the throat and face forwards, and then use the down through the arms to help the back of the head relax. You're in a situation where you could center the breath in the throat, because you're not carrying the weight of the head. And when you release that breath into the throat, you can drop from there, so the arms are light. <sighs> okay, <laughs> uh, that's enough for me. I don't, I don't need to do any more than that. Um, hard work, Mandy, still. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to discern between the work that is kind of putting you back together as a whole and that work that is you performing the posture and it being impossible or difficult. Um, yeah, there's a discernment in it. And 
and uh, the outcome, you know, uh, your experience of it, it, it might not be perfect. <laughs> it might, you might not feel like you're celebrating the posture particularly, you're just enduring it. But if you keep your, keep your intention your, uh, in these first principles, I, I want to be able to, I don't want to have to hold the posture, I want to be able to release into the ground so that the posture arises as an expression in space. No? If, you, if you keep that as a, your intent, then that's what you'll be looking for as you practice. Um, and, and the body will respond more naturally as a result of that intent. And uh, you know, do, uh, Approaching difficult things can be really, really useful. Because the reason they're difficult is because it, It'll be illustrating some something absent in our own body, some, something we need that we're missing. So approaching the thing can be very useful. Just doing it, not necessarily. Approaching it with first principle ideas, you know, I want to make this better, I want to make myself, there's a reason for this that is good for me. And, it's, and I know it's not good for me if I feel shy afterwards, you know. Um, so you can change it, you know. Um, so, yeah, approaching it with these, with first principle intent behind it and not uh, getting overly ambitious. So it might, it might be you get, to, you get to, to that just for a second before you have to catch your legs again. And each, each time you notice, you, each time you do it, perhaps you notice your groins catching and that will be because your legs are not involved in organizing the weight through your base so as soon as you, as soon as they join in with the same intent um, you'll be able to let go into the ground and um, if reaching away from you is opposite to that then you'll end up with a problem again so when you have the two directional thing when that makes sense to you through the breath it can be a release open of the knees that causes the weight of the legs to travel through your base. And again, you know, it's not as if there won't be any muscles working. Of course there will. But that's not what you're doing. You're not working muscles. You're looking for support. <laughs> anyway, I hope that was useful and enjoyable. Um, I tend to sort of turn things around a bit. I tend to confuse people because uh, the answer is always, pretty much always, in the opposite direction to the way people, you might be thinking. Uh, if it was in the same direction that you are thinking, then you would already have a solution, you see. So um, don't worry about being confused about what I say. I like, I like to try and spend time to really hammer the point home. So, basically to give you time to assimilate the idea and actually put it into practice. Um, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> a lot of the complications that we experience, it won't be easy whilst you're following my instructions because I've slowed it right down to the thinking process, which is really, really, it's, it's snail's pace compared to how the body can respond in terms of, in relationship to the breath and release if it, once, once you're integrated. So, you know, uh, working at it for 30 minutes like that, you're going to be exhausted. But if you're a kid and you didn't have these problems, you just wanted to see what it felt like, you'd do that, it would be done, and then you'd stop. And you wouldn't be exhausted, you know? Um, so what, what we're looking for is the simplicity. And uh, another first principle thing to remind yourself of. Okay, that will do from me. Uh, I'll, I've got another workshop this Saturday. I'll try and do them every Saturday. Um, 10.30 to 1. It's a nice length of workshop. We do, we do some sort of deep exploration in the first half. And then we have a little tea break. Uh, and um, take it into standing and other things in the afternoon before a nice deep relaxation. The deep... The exploration in the morning is, is, it's deep because I want people to tune into their bodies as they are and 
um, in order to get there, we need to shift gear in the mind and, and get really relaxed and then engage wholeheartedly from that relaxed place with clarity, you see. And the, the outcome is kind of quite a magical mystery tour of the body for the first half. And then we take what we find into simple things like standing and balancing and a couple of postures in the afternoon. Uh, not in the afternoon, in the second half. Uh, 10 30 to 1. Um, any, anyone that's at all familiar with me uh, is very welcome to join. Or even if you're not and you're curious, then um, you can join me. If, if you want to do so without me um, monitoring your practice, then you can book a, a view only place, and that's, uh, that's about half price, I think. Um, just 15 quid for a two and a half hour workshop can't be bad <laughs> and um, if you want me to uh, if, if you go go on screen I can interact with you and answer your questions directly and quite more often than not the workshops kind of built around what people need and the people on screen need so um, it's yeah it's a, very, it's a very healing space every Saturday 10 30 to 1 and um, if you want to have a chat with me about what whatever's going on for you then just book a free 15 minute consultation. And um, if, I, if I can give you a solution in 15 minutes, I will. And um, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I can probably give you an idea of what you need to do and give you something to practice or whatever. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's free, so why not? <laughs> All right. Um, that'll do for me. Uh, I've been Mark Jack with Vivo. This was your Yoga Solutions Live podcast. And I shall see you the same time, same place next week. Bye now.